No, it's okay. Thank you so much for for the discussion here to, 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 to share so that we can map the way forward for our own country. Uh, at the moment, the elections were done on the 23rd and 24th of, of uh, August. The elections are over. Yes, of course, we, we need to appreciate there were some challenges which were encountered by the mainly the opposition. For an example, the delay in the, in the starting of the elections on the very day of the 23rd, uh, it, it affected a lot of people. It, it discouraged so many people to really wait or be in line for more than 20 hours waiting to vote. That was a challenge on this one. Surprisingly, really, I realized that my senders, the opposition, where it is more popular, were the ones that were affected. Uh, in, in this case, Bulawayo is an opposition uh, 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 sender. Uh, there, were, there were delays in those, in those particular constituencies. Harare as well, it was also affected by these delays here, here voting material. In the Manikaland, you know, if you go back to the 2018 elections, uh, the opposition won in Manikaland. It defeated Zanu PF in Manikaland, presidential votes, the, the MDC Alliance president won uh, overwhelmingly in Manikaland. And uh, again, it was also affected the voting material, particularly in Mutasa, Mutasa district. You would wonder, could, why would you fail to have voting material in Mutasa district in Manikaland? Because most of the words that were affected were in Mutasa north, Mutasa central, Mutasa uh, south. That is really a question. And that was not fair for the opposition parties and opposition people. It was those were challenges. Besides, then there are also many other challenges really which were there. But on the very day of election, that was one of the things. Also, an element of uh, intimidation was quite visible in some parts of uh, mainly in the rural areas. You know, although people want to justify the exit polls stations, in a rural environment, those exit polls are intimidatory. Because naturally, people in the rural areas are always intimidated by Zanu PF one or the other. So when you then put an exit poll station in a rural area, you put fear in the in the rural people. So that should not be allowed to take place. That should not be allowed because definitely one or the other should not affect. It is not fair for the whole Zanu PF part to give people chicken in Pamaralis. You know, you are vote buying openly. Where on earth have you ever seen a, a, a ruling party in Africa or in, or in the world feeding ma, 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 ma people that would have come for a rally? It's not some of these things, you know, they are silent, they are, they are silent but they, they got a negative impact on the voting uh, uh, exercise altogether. So those are some of the things that we really we worry we must improve in the near future. At the moment, the main opposition party is challenging the results. It is their right. It is their constitutional right to challenge the results. They had monitors, I believe, all over the country. So they have got the v levels with them. So if they are going to go to court, allow them to go to court and, and uh, uh, try to prove that the elections were really rigged. Uh, so. So the ZANPF must not be angry because that is constitutional. constitutional. It's there in our laws that if an opposition party feels that they were not treated well, they must go to court. Let them go to court. We do believe the courts will be independent enough to make a decision that is not influenced by the external forces. And we still believe that Zimbabwe needs to improve in terms of the institutional, institutional independence, such as ZEC. I strongly believe that ZEC is not independent to me because it is directly controlled by the Minister of Justice. Also, the courts to me are not very independent when it comes to elections because they are also directly controlled by the Minister of Justice. These are some of the challenges that we must look at. These are the issues, these are the reforms which some of us would want to concentrate on and make sure that the elections, when they, whenever we have the elections, we have a completely independent uh, electoral board and a completely independent judiciary system. These are the things that we need to deal with. So right now, what we believe is 
as soon as the court, if, if ever there's going to be a court, and uh, there will be an argument over the authenticity of the results, immediately after the court ruling, the way forward, let us look at the people of Zimbabwe themselves. For three years down the line, Zimbabweans have suffered economically. The economy of Zimbabwe is not growing for the people. I know ZANU-PF is saying, but no one has felt the, the economic growth in his or her pocket. There is still pain in our pockets. Our salaries are still weak. There is no employment in the country. The medicines are not there in the hospitals. Our roads are not yet good. So, so the, the social services in terms of the uh, council service deliveries are not good because of the economy. Even football itself is also bad because the economy is bad. You don't expect us to play good football because, simply because uh, we are people. The economy must support all those things. Those are the activities that we need to do. So the, the country has suffered. So the people are, are they've really suffered and we need to, be, to feel sorry sympathetic to the lives of our own people. Our youth are not employed. The civil servants' salaries are very pathetic. And these are the challenges that we must now look at as leaders. So I call upon the, the leaders, political leaders in this country, to consider the formation of, a, of an inclusive government. I do believe that it is not an offense to go for an election. And it's not an offense to challenge the results. But, but it is quite normal and noble to do those things. So what I want to recommend is that whoever is declared as the winner immediately after the court should be should have the cases to invite the other opposition leaders to the formation of an inclusive government. We need unity in this country. Unity is very important. We need also peace in this country. And we need to have a shared vision on the economic uh, uh, trajectory. Uh, the, as long as we do not have a shared vision on the economic trajectory, it is us, the Zimbabweans, who then suffer. That's one thing that I would want to recommend. We need to make sure that we are united. But I also have advice to the opposition political parties. It is not good for the opposition political parties to go to an election divided, as we saw in the last 23 August elections. If you add even those small votes for the other opposition leaders, if you add them onto the main opposition uh, leaders' results, you would find that if, if we were united, the opposition would have scored 48 point something percent. But today, because we are divided, we, the, the opposition leader is on 44 percent. So if, if we then have to plan for the future 2028, I strongly advise that we must go for the broader alliance so that we have a very strong opposition movement. And we demand electoral reforms that I have just mentioned and many others that I have not mentioned. So that when you go for the 28, ele 28 elections, we would be more organized than what we are today. People have never realized one thing. Whether you like it or not, ZANU-PF itself is a broader alliance in this one. If you look at, at its uh, campaign strategies, it involved churches, it involved my, my, my vendors, it involved my windy, it involved my doctors, it involved my lawyers. That was some form of an alliance. So if the ruling party with its capacity and its resources can afford to be in, a, in, in an alliance form, why not opposition? Why not opposition? So I want to call upon the opposition leaders to start thinking about the broader alliance right from now as a way forward for the opposition. So I got two recommendations, the broad alliance for the opposition for 2020 elections, the formation of an inclusive government right now, so that the people of Zimbabwe can also benefit. We have a reference of the inclusive government of 2008, and uh, you know how much people had suffered. But when President Morgan Changra and, and President Mugabe uh, uh, formed a, a GNU, the economy of the country improved, and the people of Zimbabwe benefited somehow. This also happened in 1980 from the, from the War of Liberation. We had also a GNU of ZAPU, ZANU, UNC, and Ian Douglas Mill. Even in 1987 as well, after the, after the, 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 the Grahundi debacle, 
uh, ZANU and ZAPU came together and formed the GNU. And if you look at those three incidences, our economy improved and our people benefit. They enjoyed unity, they enjoyed peace, economic growth, and they shared the same vision. So right now, let us consider that. Let us, but anyway, let's go through the, the challenge of the results. Let's give it time. Let the courts deal what, uh, with whatever. Let, what, let, let us be guided by our laws and see what will come. So that's what I believe Zimbabwe should now look at those uh, very important recommendations that I've put forward.